Hey, good morning. Uh, ben here with Studio on the Lake. This is number two of the Hummingbird uh, Carve, and it is a, a filmed in a tutorial sense, so it's a little bit longer. Uh, we left it uh, before with just the body carve. This is a set of eyes. Well, set being uh, a bad term. This is one eye of the standard. I think it's a five millimeter if I were to guess and it's brown and it's the only one in a little group that came out of the fire. So I, I, I've used a couple of the others and uh, this has got one. So this guy only gets one eye. Uh, like everything in the COVID, I've ordered eyes from Tohican Glass Eyes. That's where I buy them. I buy them uh, not necessarily in bulk because they're individually priced. But I keep a I keep a, a, a group of them on, so if I get a wild hair and decide I want to carve a dragon or something along those lines, I've got an eye that may or may not work in there. So I, I keep those in a box, and, and all, we lost all of that in the fire, of course. So this guy gets one eye, and you saw that I did the groove down through the face. I got the face to the basic shape, and now I'm putting in the eye groove. The eye groove on most of these birds is in line somewhat with the beak. You won't get to see this guy finished because uh, I'm down in Iowa this week and this is my last day down here and then I'm home and I'll get him finished and I'll, I'll do a, a little short on the on that guy. But uh, I put the kind of the eye socket in there and that's the smaller ruby bit. It's a 332nd. You can see that it's in the new Elite, uh, Oz Elite Carver. Uh, and I, I went with that, if you remember correctly, because I didn't really like the vibration in the handpiece on the RAM. So I was afraid to go from the $300 RAM up to the $700 RAM. Uh, the concern being that the handpiece might be of the same quality. I, I don't know that for a fact because I didn't spend that money. But uh, I do know that uh, a lot of uh, folks that are doing uh, this type of power carving use the Oz. They use the Oz 2 and the Oz Plus. I think are the two and uh, they've always been around the $700 range which is a bit pricey for those of you getting into it here's my standard quick wood and I love this stuff this stuff is uh, fantastic and you can now get it at any hardware store pretty much uh, it used to be you had to order it special to get it and it's a two-part epoxy I can take a small piece like this and it, it, I don't really even need it that long. It needs to turn a consistent color. You get the lighter color to mix with the darker color. And then the, that eye socket was cut in with a, uh, a burned in more. So if you saw it with a, with a diamond uh, round, sometimes I'll, I'll use a cylinder or whatever it takes to, to get the eye. And I make the eye just slightly larger than the... Uh, or the eye hole slightly larger than the eye and the reason I do that is is this next step right here and it's also something I do with my knives if you've been watching the back of uh, one of my well, all my knives will have this but the one knife I particularly like to set and that's that one right there and that's a handle I made but now see that stuff squeezing out around the edge of that eye if you clean that off carefully you could leave an eyelid Sometimes I will leave the eyelid, other times I won't. In this case, I'm going to take it all off. But when I, I get done, I'm pretty sure I left the step in this in this filming here. But uh, I clean it off, and it looks good, and uh, melts into what I've done. You can also do the feathering before you put the eye in. That way you don't have a chance of tacking it. But uh, I, I typically don't anymore. And now here's the here's the tricky part. And, and this isn't really going to show. The last thing I do is press this eye just a little bit more. And it brings a little ridge around the eye. And then you can come in and uh, either sculpt it or, or take it off. In this case, I, I, I didn't need the ridge and I took a lot of it off. Now, there's one without the eye. And you, you'll see the second one. I, I got some eyes coming in and hopefully, I don't remember, hopefully I got a 5 millimeter brown. So the next thing that's going to happen here, this bird has motion. And this is a good point to talk about um, static in your carvings versus uh, life or motion. 
and you can see I'm drawing these lines in and the, the reason that I'm drawing the lines in is I'm going to use those as a following guide to keep that that motion alive so if you've ever watched a hummingbird they do all kinds of aerobatics and they, they fly all around they contort their bodies and this guy is contorted uh, you can see the center line almost wraps around the body there. It, it's not straight. You see how that kind of comes down in an S curve? And uh, that gives him a, a little bit of a motion. Now when I put his wings on, his wings are gonna uh, further delineate that motion. So here's a, uh, another of those, uh, this is a ball that came out of that uh, $12 set from Amazon. I, I'm not a big fan of the cheap bits. I find, but I, I also find that uh, they do work, and I like to work with a ball uh, in, in this stage or in a lot of stages because I can go in any general direction with that thing. So right here, I'm, I'm contouring, I'm kind of putting feathers in. If you look, I'm doing a little S shape, and I'm trying my best not to hit that eye because if I do, it, it uh, will scratch the diamond. Diamond will cut glass, as you well know. But if you do that, just take a little bit of fingernail polish, and I haven't for quite a while. It's, it's been probably over a year before I, since I've tagged an eye. Uh, but I'm, I'm doing the feather pattern that I just laid out in the flow. So there you go. You could get away with that if you're going to paint it, because a lot, of the, a lot of the feathers are in there. But you can see the flow that I did on that head. So I've got my burning pin out, and this is from PJL Enterprises. This is the dual. Uh, I like to run things in sets of two because I hate changing things over. I run two power carvers, one with an eighth inch uh, shaft, a collet in it, and the other with a 332nd. I do have a grinder that has quarter inch, uh, that all run quarter inch, but uh, that thing's a beast. You might see that uh, when I get the chainsaw stuff in next week. I, it looks to me... Uh, following along with the email that it's all been delivered and we'll see how it goes together and I will put a, a video to that Jordy Johnson over at Carving Fusion Jordy's telling me don't do bears don't do bears don't do bears uh, but uh, I've got an idea for um, what I think a bear ought to look like uh, typically I, 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 I like the fact that the, the carvers are doing or the chainsaw carvers are doing it obviously bears are a big a big selling item uh, I mean, there's so many, only so many subjects. If you're trying to do this for a living, that people like, and obviously, if you're doing this for a living, you're going to carve what people like. It's very rare uh, in art, uh, and this is all my opinion. And take it if it makes sense. To take it if it doesn't, uh, just ignore what I have to say. Uh, Art is kind of like working at, at uh, any other job at the bank. If you want to make a living doing it, you can't be a purist. Um, if you're trying to do this for a living, you've got to carve what people are interested in and what people want to buy. And then, uh, unfortunately, you have to carve them over and over again. If you carved, uh, let's say I carved 10 hummingbirds and put them in a gallery or in a store, there would be one or two hummingbirds that would uh, never sell as long as I kept replacing them. And that just has to do with art being uh, in the eye of the beholder. People see different things. So if you want to be a purist and you carve exactly what you like, that's all fine and dandy. Uh, but chances are probably pretty good that you won't, unless you're really, really good and really have a following, you won't be able to carve uh, what you want to and make a living at it. You have to compromise at some point. So no bandsaw because of the COVID and it's still not uh, shipped. So I'm, I'm having to carve it out with a uh, with that jeweler saw, which I really do love. So I cut the wings out. I left them intentionally thick so that I can do a curvature on the wings and then I, I cheated. Uh, since the wings should be relatively the same, I took a knife and a rubber hammer and split them and uh, for some reason, they, uh, one piece cut really nice and one didn't, so I'm going to clean that up and make that one wing match the other wing. And the quickest way to do this, of course, is with a knife. You're going to notice that I've, uh, I've turned the music down quite a bit. I got kind of lax in, uh, in the, 
evolution of this. And initially, I would put a video up and I wouldn't say anything uh, and put music in there. And people received that with various different degrees. And then uh, evolution of the channel. Uh, people said, well, I like your voiceover. So I started doing more of a voiceover. And then in the editing, I, uh, I use um, DaVinci Resolve to do the editing. It has a audio editing in there. And, and I can do what they call docking or ducking, meaning when I talk, the uh, music goes down and comes out and then as soon as I quit talking it picks that up and, and ramps the music up a little bit. Well, when you're adjusting volumes on, on that, uh, sometimes I do it, I edit quickly and I don't pay a whole lot of attention. Uh, after four hours of carving and then two hours of editing, uh, the urge to just get finish this thing and not review it, I don't want to see it again. I've seen the parts and pieces uh, five or six times. Uh, I, I just put the video up and sometimes the sound has been too loud. Uh, well, uh, a gal uh, put a comment in there and I thank you guys for the comments because I do try to uh, change and, and put stuff out and content out that you guys are interested in. So I'm going to attempt to, uh, I'm going to run the music very lightly in the background here because uh, uh, there's nothing more boring than, uh, unless it's really quick, a minute or two. You can't watch 20 minutes of pure silence. One of the, I, I did some of that and some uh, comments were kind of funny. Uh, some guy said, I, I loved watching the video, uh, but at 15 minutes, my wife said, what the hell are you doing in there? It's awful quiet, it's too quiet. It's, it's like the kids, you know, you, you can tell when something is uh, going on because all of a sudden it gets pretty quiet. And, and that's a point where uh, any of you who've raised kids or grandkids, know that you need to get your butt out of the chair and go see go see what's causing all that secrecy to happen so that that's just kind of like a, a funny funny thing you know uh things you learn throughout your life is is try to keep a poker face you can walk i remember walking back into the house when when the kids were little and uh, you knew something happened simply because they all looked guilty uh, they were sitting around. It wasn't no, wasn't normal behavior, and you're like, all right, what happened? Who did what? So you saw me put the wings in there. I do a V groove uh, in the back, and then uh, I didn't show you. It's I used super glue on that. I'll, I'll, I'll randomly switch back and forth between super glue and uh, epoxy. I have found that over the years, if you're using super glue, super glue after 10 years will deteriorate especially if it's uh, uh, the pieces in the sun or it has a little bit of sun through the window, and, and you'll end up re-gluing those pieces. The epoxy seems to have a, a longer lifetime. So talking about art and movement, if you made this guy straight on as a hummingbird, uh, even though he's in 3D, it's still going to look kind of 2D, like you, like you took a, a silhouette out of a picture. But you can see this guy is twisting all the way around it gives him uh, motion and, and, in my opinion, it, along with that motion uh, comes life. So you're breathing life into it when you twist it. And a lot of times, all you need to do is twist a head, uh, tilt a head. And if you think about it as you're sitting in your chair and play with your head, uh, if you turn your head to the side, that gives you kind of an inquisitive uh, look or, or whatever. And uh, well, you get what I mean. So, uh, I was, uh, art, uh, kind of trying to stay on a subject here, and I'm going to lay the tail feathers out. I always lay the lines out, and the, and the reason that I lay the lines out is it keeps me honest, and it keeps me going in the right uh, general direction. But when, you, when you're laying out this art, and you need to give it some kind of movement, and like I've said before, art is in the eye of the beholder. I do this stuff because I enjoy doing it. Uh, I'm fortunate that I'm able to uh, uh, put this up and you guys are interested in watching it. I'm also fortunate that uh, some of the pieces come out uh, nice enough that other people are interested in them. So uh, if nobody was interested in these, I would still be doing them and there would be uh, more of a collection laying around in various different places than uh, there are right now. 
I, I have a ton of, of wood carvings around done over the years. Some of them I, I, I have a, an attachment to or I like. Some of them my wife has, has kept, grabbed and, and caught. She's actually taking uh, carvings that I've, I've done, commission carvings, and I finish them. And, and uh, she takes it out of my hands, looks at it, and then takes it and puts it on a shelf and says, okay, that's cool, thanks, that's for me, do another one. Uh, and I protest and say, oh, you yeah, know, that's 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 a commission piece. And she's like, too bad, do another one. Uh, I like this one. This one's mine. Uh, that's a pretty good indication that people like your art, or somebody does anyway. Uh, the other thing that I, that I have done on it, not so much anymore, is still kind of a rule. Uh, my carvings will, will lay around for, for a couple days or a week or two in the house, and the kids or people come by and they uh, friends and, and they like well that's really nice and and I tell them take it you can have it uh, that sort of thing uh, not so much anymore I, I remember my mother-in-law before she passed away uh, I would have four or five or ten baby birds in a stack somewhere and when she would come over she'd look at them and whatnot and it really wasn't a big deal but uh, when she would leave I would be missing two or three baby birds and then uh, six months later we'd go over to their house for something or other and I would see the baby birds uh, on display or uh, out. And, and to me, that's kind of a, that's a affirmation of your art or whatever. People actually like them and want to want to take them. And I've never really had a problem with that. So uh, you've seen this process before on the tail. I'm burning fairly, fairly hot on this. And you'll notice that the side that I'm working on is darker than the other side. For some reason, if I were to leave this alone, it would come pretty close to being neutral, the uh, freshly burned and the other side, uh, but not completely. The right side, I've taken a brass brush and I've brushed a lot of the carbon off of it. Uh, it that helps to paint and it helps to neutralize. It also makes it so I can see what those lines actually did underneath uh, that black portion. So. Uh, there's a character out there, and there's that brass brush. Uh, Gene Messer, if you haven't checked out Gene Messer's stuff, Gene is awesome. He's, uh, I call him the grandfather of, of carving. And here you see me using that ball and, and laying feathers out for the back. But uh, Gene is a knife carver. Uh, he's of the old school, and he does a lot of character work, beautiful character work. Uh, he's got so many different carvings and designs, but he kind of started this YouTube stuff. And he gave uh, other folks uh, their stuff that where they came off it. Like uh, Doug Linker uh, is a character carver uh, and that sort of thing. But uh, Gene commented on the first one of these and, and, and really liked it. And he's commented on a couple of my other carvings. And, and that's kind of like the, the master uh, saying, oh, that's beautiful, man. Uh, and all of a sudden, it's all life is worthwhile. Uh, you know, so thanks, Gene. And if you haven't checked out Gene Messer's stuff, go over there and and, and certainly uh, subscribe to his channel. Subscribe to this channel. You got Jordy Johnson. Uh, Jordy and I have a lot of fun. Just Carve Rob's in that group. Mark the Maker. Uh, obviously, if you've never uh, uh, Mike over at Stennett Sticks. Mike is a true artist, and I enjoy his stuff. And I, I had no idea that Mike followed any of the channel. He's never mentioned uh, this channel on his channel, uh, but uh, I, I, after the fire, there was a, a comment uh, from Mike in there saying uh, how he was sorry that the fire was in there. So uh, through the comments, you learn that uh, people who's watching and who's doing what. Uh, I'm obviously doing this for the fun of it, but it is nice to know that uh, the other folks who are doing this are, are looking at the stuff that, that I'm doing. Uh, a lot of times with this and with the ch those of you that are into this sort of thing and following, you will notice that um, one person will do a hummingbird and then uh, two or three other people will do a hummingbird. Some of them will attribute it back to your channel uh, or this channel or whatever. Uh, if I'm doing something, I will attribute it back to that channel saying, hey, um, Just Carve Rob did this and, and now I got, feel like I got to do one. Jordy and Just Car Rob are, are uh, doing this thing, and why we love Jordy is uh, Jordy is so inventive and so uh, fun, uh, and gives breathes life to all this stuff. And he took a comment that uh, Rob said about, "Hey, why don't you do why don't you do ears on a spirit man?" And uh, 
Jordy thought that that was ridiculous. Uh, so now they're doing ears on old old man spirits, uh, spirit faces. And uh, now I've got the urge to kind of get involved in that and, and see. And, and uh, I haven't yet. I may not, but uh, there's a possibility that I will. You know, I've got some ideas. But it, all these comments between the rest of us and, and those folks in there, uh, I, if you have a carving channel, uh, push some of the other folks' carving channels. If you don't like mine, don't necessarily put mine in there. I, I, I try not to judge anybody else's carvings. Uh, if you like my carvings, uh, say so. If uh, you don't, don't say something. Or, but if it's con con constructive criticism or something that I can learn from and make better, by all means, uh, feel free to say it. I haven't had any trouble with trolls. I've only had a few negative comments, and I just tend to brush those off and ignore them. I try not to be controversial. I'm not a drama kind of guy, and I think life's too damn short for for drama. Uh, but by all means, if you have a channel and you're you're watching someone else's uh, stuff, or uh, you're you're pirating or what along those lines, uh, do us a, a, a favor and, and and give a shout out. So we can, so all the rest of the viewers can uh, cross over and, and see if they like what those folks are doing. And those of you that are crossing over because of that, by all means, if once you get there, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. That's one of the beauties of this whole thing. Hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, leave a like. It, it helps the channel. Uh, I do make a little bit of money off of this on the on the ads. Certainly not enough to retire, or you'd see me doing this full time. So. Uh, there's the wing one done and, uh, and now this is the part i'm going to show you as we get into there this guy is obviously not finished i'm burning at this point i've taken and burned one pass and then i took it off with the brass brush and now i'm coming back and, and what i put what i would call the finish pass in there people that don't have a burner and and there you there you have it you can see the difference between the darker and whatnot and i'm going to do this probably one more time because I'm not going to put any paint on this guy at all. And the beak will be done in the next one, and I'll do the finish work and show you where that's at. So those of you that are trying to follow along and, and carve, this gives you kind of an idea of how to get a little bit of motion into this. These are really cool. You can put a long wire on his beak if you wanted to and stick him in a flower pot in the house, and that's kind of cool. You can take washes if you wanted to. I have taken washes and put the iridescent on the where the hummingbird would normally be iridescent. But uh, we're coming to a close on uh, this one. So there's a hummingbird. It's uh, one of my signature hummingbirds. I've been making them for years. I use typically the scraps to do this. And uh, I'll see you on the final on this one and maybe a little chainsaw carving next week. Thanks a lot. This has been Ben with Studio on the Lake.